guys. Well, today we're doing a, a video on this Streamlight. Um, recently bought this on Amazon and I wanted to talk about it. I think it's a very interesting flashlight. So this one is the Streamlight ProTac 1L1AA, okay? And uh, I was first exposed to this by a viewer who told me about it. So um, yeah, this has some interesting features in it. It has what's called 10-tap, so it's programmable. There's basically three different sets of UIs or user interface that this flashlight has, depending on your specific needs. But what, uh, you know, that, that didn't really appeal to me all that much because I'm not gonna use something like that. I think it's cool. It's good to have options, but this is definitely more of a complex flashlight. This is not the flashlight to give to your grandmother to keep in her purse, you know what I mean? Uh, probably not gonna use these features, but to a flashaholic or a flashlight nut or someone who just specifically loves trying different flashlights and is gearhead, you'll like this, you know, it's, it's something, it's pretty cool. Um, so, basically, the, the appeal to me and why I wanted to try this light is because of the, um, the fuel source, <laughs> okay, the batteries. So this light is a single CR123, okay, that's what it uses. And you can see down in there, our spring, right, for our positive contact. But that uh, body piece inside is actually retractable. It's also on a spring underneath. So you can use a single AA as well. So this obviously fits a CR123. So you're thinking, how is a AA going to fit in there? Well, it doesn't look like it will, but it's on a spring system. So when you put the cap on it, it pushes down. And although there's wiggle room in here, it doesn't want to wiggle. You know what I'm saying? Like this is wide enough for the CR123. Once you put the, uh, you can see the inner cap there. Once you put your, your AA battery in there, it's kind of pressure fit. So it doesn't wiggle. Do you know what I'm saying? It's it's there's a lot of pressure between those uh those springs. Alright, so it works with double A's as well. Now obviously a double A doesn't have the same energy as a uh, CR123, so your uh output and your run times are gonna be different. I'm gonna go over that in just a second here. But I thought that was a really cool design. Now I've seen different flashlights that can change in between battery sources, but sometimes they have different bodies that you know you get, different pieces that you know get lost in your gear drawers or wherever you keep your stuff. You know, I like that this is, uh, you know, very simple. It's a simple concept. I love the idea. You can see, obviously, the CR123 puts out a little bit more light. But that, that was the appeal to me, okay? That's why I wanted to try it. So, uh, it did come with a little sheath here, which I am actually using because I'm carrying a lot of EDC items. So, I put it in head down, and I clip the, uh, you can see this pot clip on here. Put that on the side. Just a Velcro pouch, super cheap. I don't like that this part's Velcro. I'd rather this be sewn and you know slip my belt through it but at least it's easy access which is nice all right so you can take it on and off without undoing your belt so that's a positive but anytime i see velcro i always want to see button snaps too because you know when this gets dirty the velcro is not as effective especially in the winter if it gets uh snow packed in there velcro stinks in the winter time uh in snowy conditions but anyway this is what it is so let's go over some of the uh the different outputs and stuff it's all right here i saved this paper so i wouldn't have to you know, say it each time. So there's three different sets of outputs and information here. The first one is on a single CR123. All right, so take a close look at that. 350 lumens for high, 40 lumens for low. On the 350, we get an hour and a half runtime. On the low, we get 14 hours. All right. Now we go down here, we can see this is our AA alkaline. Our high is 150 lumens for an hour and 20 minutes, and our low is 40 lumens for seven hours and 30 minutes. All right, now, we flip down, you can see they also have our specs for a lithium AA, okay, which are a little bit more expensive. They're also lighter, which is nice. But you can see we get a much longer runtime, okay, compared to this one here, same 150 for our high, only we're going four hours and 15 minutes as opposed to the hour and 20, and then on low, 40 lumens for 14 hours instead of that seven and a half hours, okay? So pretty cool. So it takes CR123s, uh, AA alkalines, and, and AA lithiums, obviously. Now, CR123s, I did not say that it takes rechargeable because I noticed in the paperwork, which I'm gonna start reading from now on, um, that this is not designed as it says right here. No, this product is not designed to use rechargeable CR123s. Uh, I don't know why, um, but that's worth mentioning for sure, because a lot of flash guys, that, flashlight guys out there have rechargeable CR123s simply because they're expensive to keep buying. 
So there you go. There's the uh, those specs. You can see on the back here they have a nice little chart to show you the difference between the 350 lumens and the 150. All right, so let's go over the different user interfaces. Now, as we notice on the package here, it says that this has 10 tap programmable technology. What is that? There's three user selectable programs, okay? There's basically three different user interfaces. There's three different setups for the features on this flashlight, okay? The first one, which is default, is high, strobe, and then low, okay? Now, to get to these different modes, you have to do quick taps. So the first one, when you tap, it'll automatically go to high, right? So it's in high mode when you turn it on. If you want strobe, you have to do a quick double tap. So one, two, and there's a strobe. And at any point in time, you can click down to, to keep it on that mode. And the third mode is low. So in order to get to low, you have to do three quick taps, right? Or triple taps. So one, two, three, that's low. This is the default mode. So when you get this flashlight, that's how it's set up. High, strobe, low. Now, if you do this 10 tap thing, which basically you're going to hit it nine times and on the 10th time, you're going to hold it down. It's going to change it to the second mode. Okay. In this case, it's going to be just high. All right. So that's it. This, the, when you turn the flashlight on and off, it's only going to have high mode. It basically locks it into a different user interface. So let's do that. 10 tap, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10 and hold the light will go to a different mode and shut off, right? So now, this light will only go into high mode. Doesn't matter if I hit it quickly or not. It's just high, it's just the full output. Now this function or UI, I think most people will use. Most people have flashlights, they don't use different functions or different modes. They just want as much light as possible every time they use it. So if you like the idea of this light, but you don't like the whole double tap, and I, if I want low, I have to go through high and strobe first. Like I personally don't like that. I like this mode, okay? I like the fact that um, it's only, it's full output, you know? That's cool. Now the third user interface is basically low all the time unless you double tap to get to high, okay? And that's what I think a lot of people would prefer because then you just basically have high and low, but you're also getting rid of the strobe mode, which I personally find a lot of function in a strobe mode for defensive purposes. For an EDC flashlight, you may wanna use it for defense, whether it's against a person or an animal, Specifically animals, people, you know, they might not care if they have a bright light in their face. I mean, unless it's pitch black, I'm totally surprise them with it with, with a good, powerful strobe. It might not matter for some, sometimes, but, or some cases. But with animals, especially, you know, when it's dusk or nighttime, like if you're walking your dog at night or something, and a bear comes out, or who knows, a rabid raccoon, anything. Um, you can use strobe light to disorientate that animal. So I find it to be a very purposeful uh, function in flashlights, which a lot of people just don't like it or don't care about it. But you know, it's not just for rave parties. There is a purpose behind strobe mode. But anyway, um, so yeah, let's do the 10 tap again and we'll get to our third user interface. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and hold and it shuts off. Okay, so now every time you turn this light on, it's going to be in low mode unless you double tap low, high, and you can put it in high mode. So those are your three interfaces. I'm gonna go back to default. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So first interface to recap, we have uh, high. Then if you double tap, it is strobe. And then if you triple tap, it's low. The second interface is going to be just high all the time, nothing else. And then the third one is just low all the time unless you double tap which gives you that uh, high mode, okay? So there you go, it's uh, pretty interesting. I mean, it's cool for some people, it might seem overcomplicated or unnecessary. For the gear people, it's cool. It's, uh, they could see the value in those different features and functions. To me, the 10 tap thing, uh, you know, I can take it or leave it, I don't really care. More times than not, if I don't like the UI of a light, I'll get a different flashlight. There is so much competition out there for flashlights, it's ridiculous, you know what I mean? So you don't have to be stuck with, oh, well, I don't wanna, I don't want to go th have to go through strobe and high just to get to my low. It's nice that in this flashlight, if you use it in different scenarios or different situations, you can switch the UI that's more purposeful for your needs. That's cool. But like I said, most people, it's just going to seem complicated, unnecessary. For me, the big catch with this one was the, the dual battery source, okay? Uh, and I like the fact that it's built into the body style. It's not an extra piece I have to put on here, you know, that's longer or shorter or whatever. I don't have to worry about extra parts. It's all in here. 
Now for me, I want to use the lithiums. I want the biggest output I can get. I want the brightest flashlight possible. But if I get stuck where my, my battery dies and I'm at a CR 123s or I'm out and about somewhere, I want to be able to go to the store and get one of these. I can get these cheap. You can get a, a lithium AA even cheaper than CR 123s at the store. I don't know if you guys ever looked, but if you go to Walmart, uh, by the photo section, I believe they have CR 123s and they are ridiculously priced. Same thing at like Home Depot or Lowe's. You can find CR 123s, but they're like eight or nine bucks a piece. I've seen them as, as expensive as $15 for one, one battery, 15 bucks. If you go online and you, you know, go to the right places, if you go to Candle Power Forums and look at their, you know, dealers that, that work with them, you can get discounts and stuff and you can probably get them for about a buck a piece. I've seen people get deals for Surefire CR 123s for a dollar a piece, okay? So you buy them at once, you stock up on them, and that's it. In this particular light, remember that the rechargeable CR 123s are no good. They're fine for obviously other lights, but they specifically mention not to use them in the instructions, so I would listen to that, okay? Because you don't want to burn out your flashlight or anything. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's cool. I like it. Price tag is under 50 bucks. I think it's like 43 or 44 dollars, somewhere around there. Um, was it worth it? Yeah, yeah, it's a really cool flashlight. I like it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would recommend it, uh, but you know, it's definitely not for everyone. It wouldn't be my go-to like, hey, what's a good flashlight? I wouldn't think of this specific flashlight to recommend to people because it's kind of specific to people who are more into flashlights as a hobby. You know what I mean? It's, is it the perfect EDC light? For some it will be, but for most people, probably not. Um, for 40 something dollars, you can get a flashlight that has more light and less features. And most people just want to click it on, have a lot of light and click it off. You know what I mean? So it's not geared for everyone, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So there's my, uh, my video, my review on the Streamlight ProTac 1L 1AA flashlight. I think it's cool. It's interesting. So post down below your comments, your thoughts. Let me know if you guys have this light. Um, but so far I'm, I'm liking it. It's a pretty interesting flashlight. Just not for everyone. So hope you guys enjoy the video. Thanks for watching and hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you soon. Take care.